Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! In today's video we are creating a habitat for a third animal from the new Southeast Asia Animal Pack. And by the thumbnail of this video you probably already know that this animal is the doll. Last time we added the babirusas to our zoo. I think that you guys really enjoyed this video looking uh, at the number of views, number of likes and comments. So thank you for that. I am super super grateful. And in case you haven't seen that video, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen. So definitely go and check it out because I love how their habitat has turned out. The Usuri dolls are small cunning species which live in family packs and today we are adding a small pack of them to our Elm Hill City Zoo. I'm not gonna lie, I struggled a bit with ideas for this habitat. I was a bit surprised with how much space do those small animals actually need in this game. I guess they require a lot of space because they live in those family packs and you can have up to 25 of them in one habitat. So that's a lot of animals, but compared to their actual size the habitat needs to be very big. It is actually the biggest habitat that we've built so far in Elm Hill City Zoo. It's even a bit bigger than the one that we've built for Bactrian camels. So as all of my builds, I wanted this habitat to be very realistic and very detailed and I was a bit afraid that this video would be simply too long because it would take me a lot of time to make such a big habitat look nice. In the end, this will be my longest video that I ever recorded and posted here on my channel. And I know that I have to come up with some way of making those videos a bit shorter for you guys because otherwise the habitat, for example, for African elephants or hippos that require a lot of space would take me a lot of time to build and the video would be even longer and of course, I want to add those kinds of animals to this zoo too. Also, I want to build interesting, good looking and a bit unique habitats so that you guys can get some inspiration for your zoos. And I was really afraid that I will build something basic and simple and I didn't want to waste your guys time to you know watch something that you won't enjoy or won't be you know inspiring to you so I've put some you know this unnecessary pressure on myself to build something nice without any idea and I was just staring in this blank space not knowing what to do because I was afraid that I would build something just too simple and then I thought, no, you shouldn't like think this way because you need to enjoy making those videos and I shouldn't put any pressure on myself because if I won't enjoy recording those videos, you guys probably will feel this and, you know, won't enjoy watching them too. So I completely changed my way of thinking and I decided that I need to, you know, dig, dig deeper inside the internet and find some really nice... Uh, inspiration for this habitat and fortunately I found something very very nice. So if you are struggling with inspiration just as I did, I would recommend a site called ZooChat. This is basically a website where people post photos of habitats and animals in different zoos. So you can search by you know species of animals you just type in the species that you want to find and this website will show you photos of habitats around the world of this certain animal. Also, you can search simply by, you know, the zoos. So if you like some zoo, you can, you know, open a tab with this zoo only and make a little, you know, virtual tour around this zoo with those photos and also find some inspiration. This is how I found a very nice zoo which is located in Germany and it is a Wuppertal Zoo. This zoo has a really nice architecture and really nice habitats and they also have a wonderful doll enclosure. So when I found it I right away knew that I want to build something like this 
And yeah, this is something that we are recreating today. Of course, I will put the link to this habitat uh, in the description so you guys can see what I am like inspired by a bit recreating today. I really like this habitat because it is very natural. It is basically like a part of the forest where the animal live, but they also have this, you know, lake slash river. There are a lot of slopes and terrain variation in this uh, habitat, so this is something that I was going for. So as I was talking about my struggles, I already like worked with some terrain. Uh, I created those gentle slopes that gradually come up from this water section to the small hill. This is another of those habitats that we are adding to the zoo with a mold. Habitats with moats are very typical for older classical zoos. The moat creates this natural barrier that animals can cross. And also there is this huge wall that they for sure cannot climb. And the guests are a bit above the actual habitat, so they have this perfect view for animals. This is also perfect for safety measures when it comes to those more dangerous animals. I, I mean, the doll is the first animal which you are adding to this zoo, which is basically considered a dangerous animal. It can, you know, harm the guests when it will, you know, escape its habitat. I mean, we've already added animals like seals and otters, which are also carnivores, but let's be honest, those won't, you know, be as dangerous to guests as the dolls, which are basically wild dogs, and when they are threatened or something, that they can simply attack someone. So safety measures for this habitat are definitely something that I will need to look into. This is the first time though that we are adding this wall or this barrier where the guests are looking for animals with some planter. I mean, there's a special place for some plants. They have it also in the Wuppertal Zoo, so uh, you'll see in a minute what I will actually plant in there. You also could see me adding a shelter, I mean the shell of the shelter, because I just wanted to have like a perspective where it would be located. I will build the shelter for this habitat last, I mean it will be built by the end of this video. So if you want to see me building a shelter, because I know you guys really like and enjoy my shelters, definitely stay till the end because it's also a very nice shelter for animal like this. Also, you could see me using the guest as a measuring tool. I try to build everything, you know, to the scale of the people in this game so that things don't appear like too big or too small. So yeah, while building a barrier like this, you need to make sure that it's not too low so the guests cannot bend over and fall into the habitat. And also that it's not too tall so that the kids can also see what's inside the habitat. And here I think that I've built this barrier a bit too high, that's why I lowered it after measuring it with the gas, because I thought that it's a bit too tall for the kids and they won't be able to enjoy this habitat. This fence that I'm building in here, even though it destroys a bit a uh, view for this habitat, it's also a safety measure because I had to make sure that those animals won't be able to jump from the habitat to the planter that is in this wall. This is something that the Wuppertal Zoo has also. And I think that it adds a bit to the realism of this habitat. As we all know, dogs and canines are very intelligent animals and I'm sure that after a while they would be able to figure out how to escape this habitat so we need to make sure that we do everything to prevent that from happening. In a second I will change the color of the metal barrier of this habitat to dark green. The dark green color of fences in zoos is very popular because 
it blends really well with the plants and foliage and the scenery so the defense isn't like an eye catcher when you watch an animal of course you see that it is enclosed in a habitat but defense doesn't like stand out of the rest of the scenery of the habitat and when there are for example plants that are growing inside the fence I mean sometimes there are some branches of uh, plants or you know bushes that grow throughout the net of the barrier it is barely even visible so that adds a lot of you know natural feeling to the habitat and this is something that I wanted to include here because I wanted to this habitat to look a bit like a uh, you know forest edge of the forest by the water and a silver large metal barrier will uh, destroy a bit this feeling of very natural forest so I changed this color to you know trick the eye a bit and to blend this uh, barrier a bit into the natural part of this habitat you could also see me creating those uh, gates to enter the habitat and it has a little airlock which is another safety measure I mean those gates are also in the Wuppertal Zoo they are probably used to you know maintain the habitat sometimes a bigger vehicle needs to go in there those double sets of doors are commonly used in zoos as a safety measure because you firstly open first pair of doors or first gate you close it and then you open the actual gate to a habitat so that if animal tries to escape it can only enter this airlock and cannot escape the habitat entirely so this is something that I also added for the sake of realism it doesn't have any function in the game but I think that it looks very very nice also I will finish it up a bit so you will be able to see it in cinematic shots by the end of this video how the area around this airlock will look like and now I am creating a holding pen just as I did in our previous builds and as I told you guys before, the holding pen is used to separate animals when there's one, for example, sick or if there are some conflicts within the herd or, for example, to close the animals in there when the habitat is cleaned or maintained. So this is very, very useful for the zoos, especially when it comes to those more dangerous animals that can harm the zookeeper who is like going in there yeah the zookeeper behavior in this game let's face it it's very unnatural and not too realistic i mean especially when it comes to those dangerous animals like big cats lions you know tigers but also to all the cunning species like wolves wild dogs and so on unless you know those animals are really well trained and you know raised by humans the zookeeper won't be able to just casually walk in the habitat and give those animals food because it would end very very badly for the keeper the enclosures of such animals are maintained when they are closed in the shelter or special pens also the food is not given like directly to them there are special ways to you know feed those kinds of animals because especially when they smell food they are okay can be very aggressive and the staff has to be actually trained professionally on how to you know safely feed them so yeah casually walking inside the habitat like this is definitely not a good idea right now i am uh, creating another viewing uh, point for guests i wanted to add a place where the guests can observe the animals from up close so there is this uh, glass barrier and i will put there some enrichment for the animals so they will actually have some purpose to go there the Wuppertal zoo doesn't have it so this is my creation this is something that i saw some time ago on pinterest and i wanted to uh, recreate it 
There will be a lot of IV growing around this viewing panel because I wanted to make it a bit more interesting and I think that in the end it looks very very nice with the IV. Also you can see me adding IV now to the barrier around this mold. Some of the IV will also hang down into the habitat. This is also something from the Wuppertal Zoo that inspired me and I wanted to do something like this and we could easily do it because the dolls obviously won't be able to climb this hanging IV. So it could easily hang down into the habitat and create this very cool overgrown look. In this area where we are building it right now, I mean it is a bit behind the small mammal house, there will be three uh, habitats that I've planned. One of those habitats is the doll habitat and the next one will also share a shelter with the dolls, so there will be also another uh, habitat next to it. And one habitat like opposite to those two. And after adding those two additional habitats, I will make this tour that I promised you guys from the very beginning. So there will be tour of the zoo and everything that we've built so far from the guest perspective. And I think that this tour will mark like the end of the first season of Elm Hill City Zoo. But don't worry, there are many many more episodes and seasons to come. But yeah, after building some of the habitats and buildings, we'll have those tours so that you guys can see how the zoo is changing, where everything is located and simply how it feels to walk around our zoo. So yeah, please be patient because as you can see, the tour is coming very soon. As you can see, I painted a terrain a bit inside this habitat. I wanted to make sure that I will put a lot of dirt around the habitat, I mean by the boundaries and the barriers, because those kinds of animals, I mean the dolls, the wolves, they tend to, you know, run around the habitat and, or walk around the habitat. Uh, because they patrol the edges of the habitat because they simply feel like this enclosure is their terrain so they are patrolling the, the borders just to see if there are no intruders and to protect territory. So yeah, around of the habitat there will be a lot of paths made by animals so there shouldn't be any like, you know, lush green grass. Again, I wanted to add this detail for the sake of realism. Right now I am creating something that actually inspired me to recreate the Wuppertal Zoo habitat for the dolls. It was this pile of rocks and stones that is above this water section. It looked really really cool, the animals actually on the photos of this habitat are jumping and roaming around those uh, huge rocks. But in this game, unfortunately, this is like non-traversable for them. I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit challenging to build something like this because there was simply a lot of rocks. And in this, uh, you know, original build, the rocks are in different sizes, but most of them are really small. So I sank a lot of those rocks into the ground so that only tips of them come out from the ground and they appear to be very small. There are a lot of them. I also mixed three kinds of rocks, the, the temperate rocks, the taiga rocks and the tropical rocks. I think that this mix looks very good, very natural, but also uh, when I will add plants like between those rocks, it will look wonderful and simply very natural. I can already tell you that in this habitat there will be a lot of rocks and a lot of plants. Because I wanted to, as I said, I wanted to make it look like an actual forest. So it will be very lush with a lot of different kinds of plants. But the end result is very very satisfying to me. I also added a lot of those small rocks from the aquatic park uh, near the water. I mean, in the real habitat there is a small gravel, but we don't have anything like this in the zoo, so I added those rocks and I also like how it looks. 
I only struggled a lot with the colors of those rocks. I wanted to make them, you know, perfect, like to match the colors of actual uh, rocks that we used. And it was a bit of a struggle, but I think that in the end I quite matched it, but maybe those, uh, you know, gray rocks could be a bit better. But in the end, I really like how they fit, how they add a lot of realism to this build and to this uh, whole like forest. They are definitely one of my favorite pieces from the aquatic park and I use them simply in all of my builds. And now I would like to make a little announcement. I finally found some free time to create a Discord server. So if you want to join my Discord server, the link is down in the description to this video. So you all guys are invited. I wanted to have a place where we can talk, where we can share some ideas about Planet Zoo, about Prehistoric Kingdom, where you guys can also show me your creations, what you, you know, build in this game. Some of you actually asked me about uh, creating a Discord server, so here it is. And everyone is welcome, so please join and say hello. There are already some, you know, channels added, but if you want more or any more topics, I can also add more. On my Discord, I will try to share some inspiration with you guys, so I will put there some, you know, habitats from real zoos that inspire me and that I want to recreate in the future. Also, there will be announcement about my newest videos and there will be some general channels so that we can talk a bit. And who knows, maybe in the future we'll make some contests, like other creators do, so that your builds can be showcased here on my channel on YouTube. So yeah, the Discord is finally here, and if you want to join it, the link is down in the description. Another announcement is that maybe some of you noticed that the thumbnail of this video changed a bit. I mean, last time it like, came to my mind that if I add numbers of episodes on the thumbnails, I mean, we are now on episode 19 of the Elm Hill City Zoo, it can be a bit discouraging for new people to start watching my new videos, because they might think that they need to watch all 19 episodes to get to this new video and that's like completely not true you can start watching whenever you want and then come back if you want to those you know older videos or you can just start watching from this video here today so yeah the numbers of the episodes will be gone from now they will still be in the intros of the videos so if you want to see which number of the episodes you are watching right now, pay attention while you are watching an, our intro. But yeah, to not discourage the new people, the new members of the channel, I don't think that adding, you know, those high numbers of uh, episodes in the thumbnails is a good thing. Because as I said, even though that it is basically a series, you don't need to watch all the episodes to know what we are doing here. I am now adding a burrow for animals, I mean it will be a natural shelter inside the habitat. I mean in the real life they are probably using such burrows to sleep in them, to feel safer at night. So this is a quite nice addition, so that they can feel more natural in this habitat. And probably those kinds of ha animals, they also dig up burrows in their habitats in zoos uh, if the keepers let them. So yeah, I wanted to add something like this. The animals can actually use it. So I've put there some hay beddings to, you know, encourage them to come in there and rest a bit. And I think that it is a really nice addition to this habitat. Okay, and while I am adding all those plants and rocks to the habitat, I think that it is perfect time for our fun facts. So as you guys probably know by now, in every episode I try to give you some fun facts about an animal that we are currently adding to our zoo. So today's fun facts are about the Usuri dolls. The Usuri dolls are the biggest subspecies of doll and are native to East Asia. 
They live in forests, plains, grasslands, savannas, steppes and alpine tundras. So the range of their habitat is actually impressive. They live in India, Nepal, China, Bangladesh, Neymar and Thailand and are believed to be in extinct in uh, Mongolia, Siberia and Korea. The doll fur or coat, it changes uh, during the year. I mean, they have woolly winter coat with white under fur and large mane during the cold season and the leaner coat during the summer. Also, the dolls that live in the north of Asia have more woolly fur, while those that live in South Asia, they have leaner fur. And that is why our dolls in game, they don't have this, you know, large manes and woolly fur, because as the animal pack is called the Southeast Asia Animal Pack, we have the dolls that come from south part of Asia, so that it has leaner fur that is closer to the body. Uh, I know that some players like complain that they don't have this mane, but this is typical for the dolls that live in colder habitats. And we apparently got this one that lives in more warmer climates. The dolls feed on smart and larger mammals, such as deer, wild boar, water buffalo, nilgau or gaur, but on few occasions they can also hunt Asian elephant calves. So that is actually crazy because they are very small. The dolls are very social animals and they live in family packs. In an average pack there is an alpha male and alpha female, their young adult offspring and litter of pups less than one year old. If there are too many of them and they try to compete for food, the dolls leave their family pack and they start their own packs. Unfortunately the dolls are listed as endangered species due to low densities. In the past they were threatened by poaching and illegal hunting for fur trade but it was completely banned and now they are more uh, threatened by lack of prey and habitat loss. They also are very vulnerable to the diseases from areas where they share the same habitats with other canids like wolves and golden jackals and also our domestic dogs. And they also become a prey to uh, tigers, leopards, wolves, striped hyenas and bears. Countries where the doll lives, they actually try to protect it. It is protected in India where the conservation breeding center was founded. In Cambodia the doll is protected from all hunting and in China the animal is listed as category 2 protected species under Chinese wildlife protection. There are actually a lot of uh, dolls in zoos. We have them in zoos all around the Europe and the United States, Asia and they also breed very well in zoos so a lot of zoos also contribute to the conservation of this species. While I was giving you guys those fun facts, we already moved a bit further with this habitat. I mean, we added a lot of foliage and you also could see me adding a lot of bushes behind the barrier of this shelter. This is something that is also in the Wuppertal Zoo and also which is very common in zoos. The plants are and bushes are planted like this to, you know, hide a bit the uh, color of this fence as I told you this uh, dark green color blends with the plants so that you can barely see, see it and it makes it helps create this very natural look uh, without the feeling that animals are actually enclosed in an enclosure. As I told you in my previous videos, I try to use temperate plants and uh, plants that will actually grow in the temperate biome. Uh, I'm not using, uh, you know, top tropical plants outside, uh, just for the sake of realism, they won't have any chance of surviving in the climate of, you know, you, Europe, the temperate Europe where we are building this zoo. 
uh, we have changing seasons, we have snow, so no palm trees and trees like this. But there's one exception, because I simply love this tree and I love how it looks when it is sink sunken down into the terrain so that only the upper part is sticking out and it creates this very natural bush. I think that this tree is called Marula tree, if I'm not wrong, and it has those really nice colors, it adds a lot of texture to the... Uh, you know to the plants and to the habitats so yeah this is the only plant that I use but I don't use it as a tree I only use the leaves of it uh, so I think that you will be able to forgive me because I simply love this plant of course as last time I won't include uh, you know decorating the area around the habitat in this video because it would simply be too long to watch uh, so I will do it off camera and you will be able to see the habitat with, you know, area around it uh, done in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. I started to do it for all my videos and I think that it really works because I don't like to present the only the habitat that I've done but also, you know, to make area around it look nice so you can see how this habitat actually is integrated to this zoo and not just to you know show you the finished habitat with a plain grass and you know flat terrain around it so yeah if you want to see this habitat with the area around it and with some custom billboards that i created for this habitat Definitely stay till to stay till the end of this video because there will be some cinematics that you will be able to enjoy. Besides the rocks and the plants, I will also add a lot of branches and logs to this habitat to make it look even more natural. And I would love to have more of those in this game. We only have several of those, you know, dead broken trees and uh, some of the branches in the construction items. Those branches are kind of big and I wish that we had something smaller that you can, you know, just put around or throw around your habitat for sake of realism because there are always some branches uh, or sticks on the ground laying, you know, in the, in the plants or down the trees so I really like how just adding some of those branches you know added a lot of realism to this habitat and I would simply be very happy if we could add more of those. And now I would like to talk a bit about the shelter that we'll start to build in a second. It will be somehow familiar to the shelter of Binturongs that we've built you know some time ago. It will also have some plants on the roof, it will also be from the concrete, but it would be very different inside. For the Binturongs we've built a shelter that guests can actually go inside and you know observe the animals uh, when they are inside, when they are closed there during winter months. And here I think that the dolls will be able to roam, roam around the whole habitat during the whole year because of their wide range of habitats they live in the nature so the guests you know are not able to go inside this shelter but i still wanted to make it nice and look realistic inside at first i wanted to put a gate to a habitat in there but then i realized that it would was very hard to do with the paths and with this holding pen that we have like you know behind the shelter so I added in the end the, the gate to the holding pen so that it creates again an airlock and it's also quite you know realistic to have a gate in there. I added my own you know created gates inside still but it's not functional in the game for sure. 
there will also be this additional room uh, for an animal. I mean, there will be this this like door that slides up when the keeper, you know, uses the rope so that the animal can go there. Is you know, they put some uh, food in there to encourage an animal to go there. They close it and then they can examine it. They can do some medical training. It is very common for, you know, dangerous animals to have something like this because they can be trained there a bit. So then when there is a need for, you know, actual medical assistance or something is wrong with an animal, it is trained before that, you know, that, for example, medical tools are nothing scary. And when this dangerous animals is more used to those uh, procedures, it is not surprised or scared when there's actually something that needs to be done with it. It's easier to give it some medicine when it's needed. I know that in my local zoo they do it with, for example, lions, that they have uh, this special room uh, with, of course, metal bars so that the a lion can harm a keeper, but they still train. It's given some treats uh, for, you know, good training. And they do those medical trainings with them. So in case of an emergency, it is easier even to tranquilize them when they're, for example, moved to another zoo. There will also be a sand pit in this shelter so that when the dolls are closed in there uh, they still have this like a little enrichment where they can dig. It can also be used as a toilet for them. Uh, so yeah, I saw it also when I looked for some inspiration for this shelter. Uh, and there will be some different, you know, heights to sleep for them. There will, be, there will be this platform and it looks very nice when some of them sleep on this platform, some of them sleep down there on the ground. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to add it for just for, you know, not making it too boring uh, so that they can have some different elevation in, elevations inside this shelter. And yeah, this is all that I have for you today, guys. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build and stay till the end for the cinematic shots if you want to see the entire habitat and the dolls roaming around it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you want to see me building more of those realistic zoo habitats. Give this video a big thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And comment down below if you enjoyed this build or if you have any recommendations on how I can improve my future videos. Also, don't forget to join my new Discord server with a link down in the description. You are all very welcome to do so. Thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!
Hey! 